Okay, well, uh, thank you for um, joining me for this little intro. Um, my name is Jonathan Laws. I'll be your instructor for Math uh, 1210, uh, spring semester uh, 2015. Um, if you're watching this, you've either um, responded to the email or uh, followed the information on in the email that I sent you, or you've logged onto Canvas and are accessing this information uh, in this video through Canvas. Um, so either way, I appreciate you uh, uh, watching this little intro. I'll try and make this as quick as possible so we can get down to the important stuff, which is the math that we'll learn in this class. You don't need to print any of the documents that you see on your screen or that were in the email or on Canvas. Um, I will have hard copies of the calendar and the homework schedule for you. I'll give that to you on the first day of class. It'll be on cardstock, three-hole punched, um, so that you can use that along with Canvas to uh, keep yourself on schedule. But let's take a quick look at the calendar. Um, we are going to start on Monday, uh, January 12th. We'll take a couple days and work on review. Um, and <clears throat> you'll notice that as this calendar is set up here, You've got my contact information, and then it says you must watch the lecture video before class on the date that the section is listed. So um, there are um, five uh, relatively short videos um, that uh, cover the pre-calculus review part of the course. Um, if you've watched those before class on Monday, that's going to be uh, very much to your advantage. We'll spend all day in class on Monday and Tuesday uh, just going over any questions you've got from pre-calculus. Um, and I'll remind you of this in class as well as right now. Most students don't struggle with calculus. What they struggle with is they, they struggle with the pre-calculus. They can see the idea uh, behind calculus. They know it needs to be done, but then they struggle with either trigonometry or some algebra or factoring or something like that. And that's what makes it difficult. So on these days right here, these are prime days for you to uh, get any questions answered, review any skills that you need uh, from pre-calculus. Uh, that's going to be really valuable. Um, we'll have a quiz on pre-calculus uh, type items on uh, Wednesday the 14th, and then we'll cover section 2.1. And when I say cover section 2.1, we're using a flipped model for this, for this class. So what that means is you're going to watch the videos before you come to class, and then you can come to class and we'll take a short quiz, I'll check your notes or something like that, and then you can have the rest of the time to work on that material with my help. Um, I'll come around and help you with whatever questions you've got. So if you've watched section, the video for section 2.1 before Wednesday, before you come to class, uh, you're going to be in great shape because you can use that 50 minutes uh, to get your questions answered and to work on your homework. Same thing on Thursday the 15th, 2.2 is listed here. So you really should have watched 2.2 the night before. Um, that way I can take questions on it this day. Um, and then whenever a section is listed and whenever we finish it, so you'll notice we've got one day on 2.1, watch it the night before, get help on it that day, and then it will be due the next day. That's when I'll um, collect that. Um, so 2.2 should have been watched, uh, say, Wednesday night or at least Thursday before you come to class. Get questions answered on it in class on Thursday. Um, it's going to be due um, the following class, which we've got to start off with the second Monday of the class as a holiday. So 2.2 won't be due until uh, uh, the 20th, Tuesday the 20th. Um, you'll notice all the sections are listed, and then anything that happens that's a little bit unique. Um, I've got RP 2.1 through 2.3. I'll tell you what an RP is in, in a few minutes. Um, we've got uh, Project 1 groups get formed on the 28th, and then we start Project 1 on the 3rd of February. Project 1 is due on the 17th, two weeks later. Got all the holidays listed. Um, if we take a look here, we've got a nice long spring break in there. Um, again, uh, you can see when the exams are. Um, there are a couple of exams uh, on Chapter 3. There's Exam 3 and there's Exam 4. And you'll notice right here, final exam for this class is on Wednesday, uh, May 6th from 7 to 9. It'll be in our regular classroom, and I've got a couple optional final reviews scheduled. Um, so let's take a look at the homework page. And again, I'm going to give you a copy of the calendar and the homework page on the first day of class, so no need to print these off. Um, these are all the problems that you'll need to do, um, and we'll, as we get into this, uh, you'll, you'll get comfortable with this. Um, so the uh, diagnostic test, A through D, all problems on these pages right here. Um, see the next two lines for instructions. On A and B, you're going to do all the problems with multiple parts. Excuse me, for, uh, yeah, for problems with multiple parts, you do every other problem. So you're going to do, if it's labeled problem, say it's problem number seven and it's got A through G, 
you're going to do A, skip B, then you're going to do C, skip D, do E, and so forth. And for part C and D for that diagnostic test, you're going to do all of those. And then chapter one, um, it would be good if you browse through that, um, read chapter one basically, and then do 1.1, these problems here, 1.2, these two problems, 1.5, this problem, and then the chapter review, um, all of those problems there. May seem like a lot, but I think you'll find most of them relatively easy. And again, the better you do on the pre-calculus review of the course, uh, the better you're going to do uh, overall, I would imagine. Um, so we'll talk more about that uh, when we get into the course. Let's take a quick look at the syllabus. Um, again, there's no need to print this or anything. This will be on Canvas all the time. Um, but here's my contact information. Uh, there's my office phone number uh, with extension. Um, and because I spend most of the time in class working on questions, uh, that's kind of the office hours. But if you do find a need for something outside, we can do something like that by appointment. And again, all the information uh, that you need for this course can be accessed through the Canvas website. Um, I don't require any online homework for this class. The textbook is Calculus Early Transcendentals, uh, seventh edition by James Stewart. They've used that book for a couple of years here at the college, so you should be able to find a used copy somewhere, maybe even on KSL. Um, again, you're going to be responsible for all this information, so I would take a, take a look at it, um, but I'm going to skip to the important parts. Uh, let's talk about calculators for a minute. A few years ago, the college changed their policy. They do not allow graphing calculators on uh, the final exam. So I don't allow any uh, graphing calculators on my exams, but it would be a really good idea if you had a nice scientific calculator that you were familiar with. Um, if you have a graphing calculator, they do come in handy. I will use one occasionally in class. Uh, just to demonstrate some things. Um, I wish the policy were different, but that's the way it is. Uh, that's what we've got to go with. So definitely have a scientific calculator. If you've got a graphing calculator that you can use, that may come in handy occasionally. Uh, this is a gen ed class, so we will do a signature uh, assignment for your e-portfolio. Uh, hopefully you've got one of those set up. Um, that is, uh, you will get a small grade for posting to your e-portfolio. And I'll tell you which project uh, from the class should be your signature assignment. Um, please make sure you keep up with the class and, and make sure you keep uh, all your homework uh, just for uh, reference um, and in case I make a mistake entering grades. Just a reminder about the department policy about final exams. Anybody that gets less than 60% on the final exam, and it is a department produced final exam. Um, so. Uh, I, don't, I don't write the test, I just give it to you and they tell me how I need to grade it and that sort of thing. But um, if you get less than 60% on the final exam, the highest grade I can give you is a D. Um, so if you go into the final with a, you know, a B plus or something like that and get a 61, great. Uh, you're going to get whatever grade you earn. It's probably going to lower your grade a little bit, um, but I can still give you the grade you earn. If you go in with an A and you get a 52% on the final exam, that means the highest grade I can give you is a D, which would mean you'd have to retake the course. Um, again, please don't cheat. Uh, the, the, the penalties are pretty severe, so I don't expect that uh, on this level, but I do need to mention it. There's my grading scale there. These are the approximate weights for the, the, uh, the different categories. We'll have homework, homework quizzes and projects. They'll be worth about 30%. Midterm exams, um, we'll have about four and a half of these. They're about worth about 45% of your grade, and then the final exam is worth 25% of your grade. Um, homework assignments, um, again, I mentioned those a little bit earlier. Um, I do uh, look at those. Um, I may collect those occasionally, ask you if you're done with them and different things like that. Um, but this is basically how you get your points for each one of the sections. So we'll have a short quiz or a note quiz or something like that. Um, for each section. So if we come back here, um, well, let me, let me finish talking about this. You'll get one point for the quiz that we have on that section, two points for the homework, and then two points for a, a representative problem. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So let's come back here to the calendar. Let's go up and take a look at um, chapter two. So here's all of chapter two. We start at uh, the first week and we end it with <clears throat> an exam on February 2nd. So when you come to class on Wednesday, I will expect that you've watched uh, 2.1. We'll have a very short, probably a very easy quiz on 2.1, probably one of the easiest problems on the assignment or maybe even one from the, from the lecture notes. Um, we'll have a quiz that day. That gets you one point. That's just to kind of keep you on track. 
You'll get the assignment done in class that day, finish it up overnight, and then you'll turn it in the next day. Um, you'll get two points for that. So one point for the quiz, two points for turning in the homework, and then you'll notice that there are uh, RPs. Those are called representative problems. Those are due the following week um, on, on Friday, um, and it says RP 2.1 through 2.3. So that means these sections right here, you're going to do a representative problem, and that's worth another two points. So basically, every section that we go through is worth five points. One for the quiz that we have on that day, two for the homework, and then two for the representative problems. So let me talk about representative problems here for just a second. Okay, a representative problem consists of three things. A description of what we learned in that section. So I'm going to give you a notebook and on uh, each page of the notebook, you're going to devote one page to each section. So say on 2.1, you're going to write 2.1 at the top. You're going to describe what that section was about. Um, let's see. Um, then you're going to pick one problem that represents uh, what we learned in that section. Um, and then you're going to do the work, and then you're going to have an explanation of that work. So let me show you what that, that, that would look like. Um, this was a student a couple of years ago. I asked him if I could share this because they did a pretty darn good job of this. Um, they didn't put the section number on it, um, but they did uh, write down what it was about. Here's the problem that they chose to do, and this happened to be problem number 31. Here's all the work down this side. And then here's an explanation of the work that they did. This was an average rate of change problem. Um, let me show you another one. Here's, here's, a, here's how I'd really like them done. Um, this is section 2.1, okay? the idea of limits. So this is the number of the section. This is the title of the section. And this is a description of what the section is about. It says this section introduced the concept that even though a function may not have a value at a particular point, we can still figure out what function value they approach by plugging in x coordinates uh, that are really close to the point of interest. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get to 2.1. But here's the problem they chose to do, number nine. Okay, here's the problem, number nine, as it's written in the book. And then you'll notice down below, here's all the work, and here's a description of why they took each one of those steps. So this example that I've got right here, this is a good example of how a representative problem should be done. Section number, the title for the section, a description of what the ideas in the section are all about, Here's the problem that they chose to do that represents those ideas. Here's the work, and then here's the explanation over on this side. We'll take a look at one more set of examples. Again, this was from a couple years ago. Uh, this is from section 5.6. Um, they've got the title of the course. Um, they don't have a description of what 5.6 was about, was about, which would be really nice. Here's problem number 15 that they chose to do. Here's the work down the left side, and then there's the description of uh, what that work uh, was about um, on the right side. So that's how a representative problem should look. Um, so let's come back here to the syllabus. Again, one point for a quiz on each section, two points for the homework, and then two points for a clear and accurate representative problem. And again, I would read through this in detail. Um, I've kind of described each one of these things, uh, but make sure you're aware, aware of that. And again, I will give you a notebook so that you can do these, um, and we'll hand them in. Uh, as they're indicated on the uh, the calendar. So 2.1 through 2.3 representative problems are due on the 22nd. For 2.4 <clears throat> through 2.7 are due on the 29th. You'll notice the next set, 2.8 through 3.4, aren't due until about three weeks later. So um, please make sure you're to class. Um, I know occasionally uh, someone might have to miss or something like that, but the more you're in class, the better off you're going to be. Uh, please don't miss the day of an exam without letting me know ahead of time. Uh, those are posted on the calendar. They're on the website. Uh, please make sure you're there and you plan for them. I don't allow for, uh, for makeup tests. Um, I do replace your lowest test score with your final exam score. So if you got a, say you missed a test or you got a 52%, and let's say you pulled a 98% on the final exam, I'll go back and replace one of your lowest test scores with your final exam score to make up for that. Um, I do allow late work, but here's how late work works. Um, I don't allow more than six late assignments for the entire semester, so please plan accordingly. Um, and then I don't allow anything to be turned in after we've taken the test on the material. So if we look at the calendar here, the first exam is going to be on February 2nd. That exam is going to cover all of Chapter 2, uh, except for 2.8. We, we push that into the next unit. Um, so anything from 2.1 up through 2.7 can be turned in late. 
on that day right there before we take the test. Now, if you come up to me later in the day or send me an email that night, say, hey, I didn't turn this assignment in. Can I turn it in tomorrow? The answer is going to be no. That's your motivation to get everything done before you take the test on that material. So 2.8 through 3.11, the tests are right on these days right here. You can turn some of these in late, but you can't turn it in after this day. Um, so make sure you're aware of that. Uh, there are lots of opportunities to get extra help. The way I've structured the class, I mean, it's, it's designed to get you a lot of extra help. Um, so um, make sure you watch the videos online, ask questions in class. There are lots of other good uh, YouTube videos. Uh, Patrick JMT is an excellent instructor on YouTube. He's got some short videos. You can go to Khan Academy and different places like that. Um, just as a general rule of thumb, uh, most college classes, you can plan on two hours outside of class for every hour inside class. So this is a four credit hour class. You can expect four hours in class and probably eight hours or so outside class. Math classes tend to be a little more intensive than average. So I would say two to three. So plan on devoting um, quite a bit of time, you know, eight to 10 hours, maybe even 12 hours outside of class if you want to do well. Um, there aren't any makeup exams, as I said, but again, I'll, make a, I'll uh, replace your lowest exam score. Um, and then I do occasionally collect the assignments just kind of randomly. So please make sure you've got everything with you so that if I ask for it, that you can turn that in. Um, that, that kind of takes care of the high points on the syllabus. Uh, but again, you'll want to take a look at this and, and review this. You don't need to print it out, uh, but I would browse through um, and make sure you know what's going on. The last thing I want to mention is I've, I've taught this course for a long time, and every, every semester I usually gather some information about what advice students would give to people who are going to take this class. Um, I've got this document on Canvas. You'll notice that a lot of these uh, deal with procrastinating. They say don't fall behind. Uh, do the representative problems when you do the homework. Don't leave them till the last minute. Um, take notes every day. So it would be really good if you watched the lectures, filled in the notes and things like that. Stay caught up, study hard, uh, different things like that. So all the typical things that everybody knows you need to do well in a, in a math class, uh, this is the type of advice they're getting, giving. So it's not just teachers that ask you to do this. Um, it's students that have taken this course. So again, thank you for watching. Um, I look forward to seeing you on the first day of class. Um, please uh, follow the rest of the instructions and get started. You do need to print off the notes for um, the chapter one review, watch those videos, and then come on the first day of class uh, ready to ask questions. Uh, we'll, we'll get things rolling as we go along here, but I appreciate your efforts. Um, and uh, again, I'll see you on the first day of class. Thank you very much.